Hey guys, welcome back. Glad to have you back here in the Wild Wild Testament again. We're going to go through a good lesson today. One of my favorite characters out of the Bible, his name is Moses. Moses is a huge story, but we're going to kind of try to grasp around today. First, I want to see if we can hear from one of our special guests doing the Bible verse. The glass just the, the flowers fall to the ground. But what all God say will stand forever. Isaac 48. <laughs> all right. That was awesome. Thanks a lot for sharing. Now, today we're going to open up in prayer. We've got a lot of fun stuff again. We've got a special guest planned to see you guys again today. We've got um, Miss Christy is actually going to come out here. We're going to have a discussion about the Bible story. So I'm super excited. She's got some awesome insight and I'm ready to get started. You guys ready? Awesome. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, thank you for this day. God, we thank you for just waking us up. Lord, giving us this, the day that you have made. Lord, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we just ask that you bless the people, bless the hearer. God, give us hearts and, and ears to hear your word. God, that we would be who you desire us to be and do the things you desire us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey there, how do you do? We're headed out west, but we're waiting on you. Pick up your boots and join the fun. Just follow along, watch how it's done. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, get up, it's time to go. Howdy high, saddle up, it's time to ride. Get on your feet, lickety split, stomp your boots and just don't quit. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, So round and round, come on partner, let's get down. Nowhere else we'd rather be, come on and holler, repeat after me. Yee-haw! 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 We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. take too kind of that. In fact, I heard there's a new sheriff in town. All right, Pharaoh, there's a new sheriff in town, and the Lord said to let my people go. Are you talking to me? That's right, I'm talking to you. Let my people go. But I'm not Pharaoh. You're not? No, man. I'm not Pharaoh. 
Well, shucks, man. I got myself all worked up for nothing. I used it on the wrong guy. I'm sorry if I scared you. You did. I was pretty intimidating. That's okay. Really? Yeah. You were pretty intimidating with your speech there. But I know who you are. You're Moses. And God sent you to set his people free. Man, you sure do know a lot there, stranger. Yeah, but I know Pharaoh, he's not going to be so easily intimidated. Yeah, I know, man. I grew up in the same household as Pharaoh. He is one tough hombre. But I feel bad for him. You do? Yeah, man. He don't know the Lord like me and you do. And he don't know that there's consequences to his actions. Or the fact that he didn't do what God told him to do. Wow. And if he keeps that up, God's going to pull out the big guns. Woo! I'm scared for him, too. You should be. You've been doing what he wanted in this town for far too long. But now, there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah, there is. His name's Moses. No, man. His name is God. And God's going to clean up this town. But right now, I got to go and get myself psyched back up for my next encounter with the Pharaoh. You have a good day now. Moses is about to show Pharaoh. Pharaoh's about to learn the hard way that there's consequences for not doing the things that God told you to do. Well, I sure hope you all take the easy way out. Anyway, happy trails! Hey, welcome back! That was awesome. Way to go, Frank. Way to go, Moses. That was great. I'm glad that you guys got to see that. That was a lot of fun. Today, we're going to talk about the story of Moses, and I can't wait to get into it, but I also have a special guest here with me as well, and you may know her pretty well. It's actually Pastor Christy. I know her pretty well. She's my wife, so come on out, Pastor Christy. Hey, guys. Pastor Christy's going to be discussing the Word of God with me. We're going to be kind of going over it together uh, and maybe break some things down in the scriptures, some things that really stood out to her, some things that really stood out to me. Me, yeah, you're going to need your cowboy hat if you're going to get started here. We're going to get ready to roll into this. One big thing we want to do first is kind of get a broad view of the story, kind of get an overview of the story. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a video for our audience first, and then uh, we'll work it from there. You ready? All right, let's go. After meeting with the Israelites to let them know that God had heard their cries and was coming to their rescue, Moses and Aaron delivered God's message to Pharaoh. Let my people go. But Pharaoh refused because God had hardened his heart. Instead of showing mercy, Pharaoh was cruel and made the work and lives of the Hebrew slaves even more difficult than before. The showdown was at hand between God and Pharaoh. Who was the true king? Who was all-powerful? Whose command could not be ignored? God told Moses not to fear, but instead prepare to witness his mighty power as he forced Pharaoh to let his people go. The next morning, Moses again came to Pharaoh, and again Pharaoh refused to let the Hebrew people go. So, at the Lord's command, Moses told Aaron to stretch his staff over the Nile River, and the waters turned to blood, causing the fish to die and the waters to become undrinkable. But Pharaoh's heart hardened further, so God sent a second plague. This time, frogs covered every inch of the land. This became so unbearable that Pharaoh begged Moses and Aaron to make this plague stop. The morning of the following day, Moses returned to Pharaoh and commanded him to let God's people go. And again, Pharaoh refused. God had Aaron strike the dust with his staff, and gnats swarmed the land, covering both people and animals. 
When Moses came to Pharaoh again the next day, Pharaoh again refused Moses' request to let the people go. In response, God sent a fourth plague, flies. Like a black cloud, flies covered every part of Egypt, except where the Hebrew slaves lived, spoiling the land and entering every Egyptian's house, including Pharaoh's palace. Once again, Pharaoh pleaded with Moses and Aaron to end this plague. God sent Moses to Pharaoh again, but Pharaoh still refused to listen to God. The next day, God sent a severe plague upon the Egyptians that killed their donkeys, camels, herds, and flocks. This hardened Pharaoh's heart even more against God. Again, God sent Moses to Pharaoh. When Pharaoh refused God's command yet again, Moses threw soot into the air and it became dust that covered the land of Egypt, causing all the people in Egypt to break out into painful sores. Pharaoh's heart, hardened by God, made it so he continued to disobey God's command to let the Hebrew people go. God told Moses to go back to Pharaoh and warn him that the coming plagues would be much more destructive and harsh than the last. But Pharaoh still wouldn't listen. When Moses stretched his hand toward heaven, God sent a hailstorm unlike any that had ever been seen before in the land. It destroyed plants and homes and killed animals and people. Pharaoh confessed that he was wrong, but again his heart hardened and he rejected God's command. Then God sent a plague of locusts. These insects covered the land and devoured the last remaining plants and trees in Egypt leaving the once lush farmland surrounding the Nile a barren desert wasteland. Pharaoh was still unwilling to release God's people, so at God's command, Moses stretched his hand up to the sky and a heavy darkness swallowed Egypt. For three days, no Egyptian saw another person or left their house. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron so he could try to make a deal to end the plague of darkness. Pharaoh said everyone could go to worship the Lord if all the Hebrew people left their flocks and herds behind. When Moses and Aaron refused this offer, Pharaoh commanded them never to come back or they would be killed. With the people still enslaved, God told Moses there would be one final plague, a plague so severe Pharaoh would have no choice but to free God's people. God told Moses that throughout the land of Egypt, every firstborn boy would die. God told Moses to tell the Hebrews to cover the doorposts of their homes with the blood of a lamb, and God would pass over their homes. At midnight, the firstborn sons in every Egyptian household died including Pharaoh's own son. From the lowliest of servants to Pharaoh's palace, there was no home in Egypt untouched by death. This plague so devastated the land of Egypt that Pharaoh commanded God's people to leave. The Hebrews, who had been in slavery for generations, had been set free. That was really good. That was an awesome video. That kind of gives us a big overall picture of what went down. What stood out to you the most? So a few things is when the plagues came, the Israelites were protected by God. The other thing is it's kind of a hard story because the Egyptian son dies. They do, and you feel bad for those Egyptian children. But I like to point out in the story, though, that God protects anyone with the blood of the lamb over the door, even the Egyptians. So it would be like if someone comes to my house or to our house 
and I'm not doing what I need to do to follow God and protect my family from death coming to my door, now I've really done a disservice to my family. You know, I'd like to point out God's grace in this and where he shows where he's trying to get, um, get Pharaoh to do the right thing. Go ahead and read Exodus 9, 15 for us. It says, By now, I could have reached out my hand. I could have struck you and your people with a plague that would wipe you off the earth. But I had a special reason for making you king. I decided to show you my power. I wanted my name to become known everywhere on earth. But you are still against my people, and you will not let my people go. Wow, that gives me an indication that Pharaoh has every opportunity, and even when you look at it, talk about the plagues, right? Pharaoh has every opportunity that he could turn back, that he could turn towards God, but he decides not to. He says that he doesn't want to listen to his word, that he's, he's going against him. Because he's hard in his heart. You know, it reminds me, when the people are, when Pharaoh is against the people of God, it reminds me of the promise that God gave Abraham. You remember that promise? Yeah, he said, those who bless you, I will bless, and those who curse you, I will curse. Absolutely. So this should really come to no surprise to anyone involved, because actually God mentions in a part of Abraham's life, he mentions that his people will be in captivity for 400 years. But he also says that promise there. Those who bless you, I will bless. And those who curse you, I will curse. So when it comes down to making decisions for God, we're either on God's side or we're not on God's side. In, in this situation, many of the Egyptians and the Pharaoh chose the wrong side. You know, though, it says, if I can find it real quick. It says, the officials of Pharaoh, who had respect for what the Lord had said, obeyed him. They hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside, but the others didn't pay attention to what the Lord had said, and they left their slaves and livestock outside. This is during a hailstorm. So God protected the Egyptians that listened. God was looking out for the people who were listening to him. I think that's very telling in our own lives. When we're listening to God, even when we mess up, even when we make mistakes, even when we're way off base and we do stuff that's just ludicrous and off, you know, not, not making sense, God is still looking out for the people who are ready to listen to him. He's looking out for those who love him and are called according to his word, right? He's looking out for his people. I don't know how many mistakes that I've made, and God has really cleaned up my mess many times where... I'm like, wow, I don't, I, don't, I don't deserve this, but I sure am thankful for it. And he was giving the Pharaoh the chance. He was giving him a chance. I think that God is willing to clean up our messes, and he does so lovingly, mm -hmm. and he cares about us. But he wants us to be listening to him. The fact of the matter is this. The consequences for sin is death. Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross for nothing. He died on the cross because of sin. Jesus didn't deserve to die. He actually was the Son of God. He was God in the flesh. And he laid down all of his rights as king, as the Lord, to die on the cross for our sins. Now, that's pretty phenomenal. And it means a lot. But it also means that God does care about sin. God is concerned about sin. God is concerned about us listening to his voice. So when I think, man, you know. So I think about Moses, and Moses is used by God to bring the people out of bondage and slavery. And Jesus brings us out of bondage and slavery of our sins. I'm with you. That's exactly the picture of Christ that we see in Moses. Moses is referenced so many times in the New Testament. Jesus references Moses. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, 
Many people look back. I think back I see that it means 59 times that it's mentioned in the New Testament. 59 times is a lot of times. That must mean this story is a pretty significant story. And it is because it foreshadows the coming of Christ. Foreshadowing just really means that it's giving you kind of a glimpse into the future without uh, being an exact replica. So, I mean, I think that in this, we can totally see God's hand all over it. But that was awesome. I really enjoyed that story. It's one of my favorite stories, too. Moses is an awesome character, and we're going to see him do some awesome things. And we're going to see him stick with the people just the way that God sticks with the people. He really has a heart to do the things God wants to do, but he also has a heart for the people of God. If you guys want to learn more about Moses, check out Exodus in your Bible. Awesome. Well, thanks for helping me today. I'm really glad that uh, we got to do this together. I always enjoy having you with me, uh, being my partner, my team, you know. Having a bad day, things aren't going my way. I know that God is with me, He's still there, He never leaves. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. I know that I can. Love you because you show me the way. Nothing can separate me from your love. You are for us. We know, we know in all things. God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things. God works for the good of those who love Him. You for our good, you work for our good, you work for our good because you love us, you love us, you work for our good, you work for our good, you work for our good because you love us, you love us. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. Hey, so I heard that you wanted to share an object lesson with us, so I thought that would be awesome, but I don't see the object, so... Oh, I have it. Come here, Abigail. Abigail, can you stand up here for me? So when I was studying out our word for this week, I noticed that you kept saying, stretch out your arm. Yeah? Yeah, when the frogs came out of the water, he said, stretch out your arm. When the gnats came from the dust, he said, stretch out your arm. So just stretch out your arm. And I thought, what does that mean? Oh, baby. And so, as I was looking, I noticed this. When Moses was called by God, he said, what if the elders of Israel won't believe me? What if they won't listen to me? Suppose they say, the Lord doesn't appear to you. Then, what should I do? Do you know what God said? Stretch out your arm. Stretch out your arm. Yeah. You're right. In his staff, 
he puts it on the ground from that point, and it becomes a serpent. Mm -hmm. And then he says, stretch out your arm. He picks it up. It becomes a staff again. So I'm wondering, what it does, what does it signify? Why does it stretch out your arm? You know what's awesome about that scripture in particular? Right before the start of it, see, Moses received his call the chapter before, at the very end of the chapter, it, or that chapter, he's receiving his call. And this one, it says Moses, Moses' power. So it's like Moses is receiving power when he stretches out his arm. So let me read one more thing to you. Ready? In Acts, the believers are praying. Can I sit down now? Yes, you can. Here you go. Can I sit down? Yes. Thank you for your Thank help. Thank you so much. All right. Abigail did an awesome job. So the believers are praying. This is after Jesus has died on the cross, resurrected, and ascended to heaven. Right. And the believers are praying. And it's Acts 4. Um, I'll start it. 29. It says, Now, Lord, so they're praying, consider the bad things they say they are going to do. Help us to be very bold when we speak your word. Stretch out your hand to heal. Do signs and wonders through the name of your servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were bold when they spoke God's word. That's awesome, because oftentimes when we worship, we'll stretch out our arms. And I've often heard it said, some, I've heard it said a few times by a couple of different people, it's like, hey, reaching out to your daddy, right? Like, mm -hmm. daddy, help me. Or surrender. Or surrender. Or we're surrendering God. Put our hands up and surrender. But I also see surrendering, receiving your power at the same time. That God is giving you something when you stretch out your arms. That he is delivering you the power to do his work. In Psalms, God is described as an outstretched arm. Wow, that's awesome. That's really incredible. When you think about just the things that happened in the Bible, if all we had to do was stretch out our arms, and that's pretty much what our Bible tells us, is when we stretch out our arms, it's more than symbolism. It's more than, than representing surrender. Something happens spiritually when we stretch out our arms to God. Or moving with God. Wow. Moses was moving with God when he stretched out his arms. Wow. That beats any other object lesson I could ever think of. That's really good. Just to stretch out your arms. Praise God for that. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. We really enjoyed that. Let's... Uh, Let's get ready to hear from one more guest with our Bible verse today. What do you think? Rescue the, the flower is supposed to the ground. But water God's dead will stand forever. Isaiah 43, 8. Man, that was awesome. Let's go ahead and get ready to pray out and go into our week. Ready? Lord, we approach you today with outstretched arms. God, ready to receive not only your will, but your power, God. That you have power in store for your people. That there's power in the name of Jesus, but there's power in an outstretched arm. So Lord, we just pray that you fall upon your people today. God, that your spirit will begin to empower your servants. Move upon us throughout the week, Lord, that we would be able to perform the signs and wonders that you have planned and designed for us to perform. Lord, we praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But God's got a plan for him. He's been punishing God's people. And God's not going to do that anymore. It's going to be wrong. I feel bad for him too. Shucks. Yep, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right, man. 
But I'm going to have to get out of here, get myself recycled back up from my encounter with Moses, with Pharaoh. I'm Moses. So, all right. <laughs>